the long awaited van tour is finally here and it's kind of bittersweet. You guys get to see what it looks like, but we're also selling it. We're gonna go over to a different chassis. Uh, nothing wrong with the Sprinter chassis. We love it, but we wanted something that was just a little bit extra beefier. So we're gonna start in the front. We're gonna work our way back on the outside, go over technical features, and then we'll go inside and show you all that. Right up front, you got the Backwoods Adventure Mods front bumper, 12,000 pound Warren Winch, Pathfinder lights. You have fog lights in the bumper, spotlights in the bumper, a light bar right here. And then if you look up top, you have two 50 inch light bars at the very top. So you're guaranteed daylight in the front. Also a little hidden feature is right here is a FLIR thermal imaging. <laughs> I want to say infrared, but it's thermal imaging night vision. So no light required. It reads heat signatures, which is pretty freaking awesome when you're going down the road and you can see things miles in the distance before they actually appear. Some of the technical stuff in the front, you have a ham radio antenna, you have a CB radio antenna, you have a snorkel by Terror Wagon, and then you also have security cameras located in the front. And there's gonna be three more all the way around, which I will show you. Going down to the suspension, it is a Van Compass 6.2 kit with the uh, dual reservoir adjustable Falcon shocks. And it gives you a two inch lift in the front also. Coming down the side, you have traction boards permanently mounted up top. They are a little difficult to get to. You have to get to them from the roof. But the reason we did that is so it makes it hard to steal them. Somebody walking past just can't swipe them off. Uh, you have another security camera over here. Two spotlights in the back to light up this whole side of the van. Uh, you also have a custom built skid plate down here. This is our exhaust for our aqua hot heating system. The burner is located up underneath of this skid plate. And then there's also a second fuel tank underneath here, which holds 30 gallons. And it also protects all the fuel lines coming out of that. So you're going off road, doesn't matter. It's not gonna hit. People wonder what the little mushroom thing is sticking out the side. This is actually our vent for our composting toilet. Comes right out of where the toilet is located in the shower, right out the side here. I didn't wanna put it on the roof. I hate having more holes than I need inside of the roof because it tends to puddle water up there. So we put it on the side and it freaking works awesome. Uh, as you notice, there is a dent down here. This is because we pushed this thing <laughs> beyond its limitations. And we may have gotten a little dent in the rocker panel while we were in Alaska. We are gonna fix it. It's purely cosmetic in there. Uh, we can actually pull it with suction cups. It's hollow behind that. It's below where the subframe sits. So that's a lucky win. Moving back here to the ladder, this and the roof rack were 100% custom made by a welding fabrication shop in Clearwater, Florida, where we are home based out of. It was kind of my brainchild and their brainchild put together. So the ladder is freaking awesome. You got more than enough room to get your feet in here, but it's still contoured to the van so it doesn't stick out bulky. Uh, I love this thing. We love the roof rack. So we'll take you up and show you that. bunch of stuff on it. The solar panels are Zamp Obsidian and they're actually built down recessed into the roof rack. So you get no shadows on it for one and two you're not going to hit them. It's going to hit the roof rack before it hits the solar panels so you're not knocking your solar panels up. So up in front of our deck area which we're standing on now you have the max air fan, two more solar panels recessed down in the front giving us a total of 380 watts on the Obsidian Zamp panels. And then right in the front there, you'll see like this little orange box. That is actually a satellite global GPS sensor. So you can track the van anywhere in the world. And uh, it does work when it's inside of a building too. Surprisingly enough, we, checked, we tracked it inside of a cargo ship on the way to Alaska. I was pretty impressed with that. On the back side of our roof deck, you have the big platform right here, which we've had four people sitting up here eating at one time, and it was actually surprisingly comfortable. We weren't falling off completely. In the back, we have the Nomadic Cooling. Uh, it's the 3000 series AC unit, which is 12 volt. Thing freaking is awesome. Cools this thing down really quick. We've never had any problems with it. 
the uh, two antennas right here and right here go to the built-in cell Wi-Fi system that runs on Verizon and AT&T. You can just swap the SIM card out of it. And then in the very back, you have your backup camera and then another security camera that covers the entire back of the vehicle. So moving into the back of the van, we have a custom leaf spring suspension built by Agile Off-Road. We have the Falcon shocks that are dual reservoir, same as the front and the rear. And then the tires are a 35 by 12.5 by 17 on the black rhino rims. Behind that, you have your shore power right here. It is hooked up for 30 amp service, which is also breakered on the inside. And we have back windows on either side of the bed that also open and have screens. It's nice when you want that cross breeze when you turn the fan on. The back of the van, we have the owl vans, owl engineering, owl van engineering. I don't know, owl. Spare tire carrier. It does have the ladder up above it, which makes it really easy if you got to get to the back of the, the air conditioner or work on any of the cameras up here because you can just scurry up there. Uh, we do have a full size spare with a rim on the back. We have the Backwood Adventure Mods rear bumper. We have a hitch. This thing is a light bar that goes across. We tried it, but the problem is it comes over and it plugs into where the, the trailer connect is. We do so much off-roading, it kept ripping the freaking wiring harness out going to this. So we just don't plug it in anymore. And I cut the wires off because it's not worth the hassle of rewiring it, which we did like three times while we were in Alaska. And then I gave up. We have the owl box. It's the large box on the Sherpa carrier. If you're wondering what's going on with the back windows, the, little, the wrap is a little bit bubbly, I'm not going to lie. But when we were in Alaska, we figured out that the stresses of off-roading on the back doors the windows didn't like it, so they shattered. So we replaced them with polycarbonate, and then we put a vinyl wrap over the top of it. On the passenger side, which has a sliding door on it, you also have a window on the sliding door that opens up, and it's actually right there is the cooktop, so you get ventilation coming out. You also have the same window as on the other side back here that does slide open. And this is one of our favorite things. This little box right here will control your awning. There's a mounting location for it inside, but you can take it out here. And there's no arms. It is a Gerard power awning. This awning is huge you can fit tons of stuff underneath it. It also comes out and then tips down a little bit, so that way it blocks the sun when it starts to drop or rise. Uh, it has a wind sensor in it, so if it gets a little too windy for you and it starts bumping, popping around, it will pick that up and suck itself back in. And it also has little handy dandy LED lights underneath it. So before we go inside and give you guys a tour of the inside, I'm gonna go over some of the storage area in the back here and some of the technical specifications. So you got a huge amount of storage back here. I mean, normally we have this thing filled right up. <laughs> we pack all of our stuff in there, climbing, snowboarding, skiing, all that good stuff. But some of the key features back here is you have a outdoor shower hookup. You have a regular 110 outlet. There is a built-in safe back here that has a keypad or a regular key that it takes. It is bolted directly to the frame. So good luck trying to get that thing out. It's not going anywhere. People can try to steal it for days. It will stay there. They will have to take the entire frame of the vehicle off with it. In front of that, you have a fire suppression system that is automatic. It comes from the marine industry. So as soon as that little tube senses a fire and melts a little bit, it automatically discharges and that weaves all the way through the entire electrical system. So no worries about fires. If you do end up with one, which you should not with this because I built it rock solid, uh, it will automatically put it out before you even know that you have a serious problem going on. Also in the back here, you have your main electrical wall. So I have it divided up. There's 24 volt system over here. Then you have all of your electrical coming from your battery bank. Positive over here, negative over here, 
and then your 110 system. Your inverter over here, which is a 12 3000 120 by Victron. It also has a Victron, I, I don't know what you would call it. I think it's a shunt, uh, but I don't know what they call it. So basically what I can do is I can monitor actual amperage being used, voltage being used on every system inside of here, all up front when we show you where the electrical control panels are. Everything back here is 100% marine grade. It is all fully tinned marine wire. It is upped one size from what your regular voltage draw would be. So if it called for a 12 gauge to safely carry the amperage load, I actually went to a 10. So it is overbuilt a lot. <laughs> also, what you can't see behind here is behind this and underneath the dinette floor, there is 11, one, one, 11, 100 amp hour battle born lithium ion batteries. So that gives you <laughs> 1100 amp hours of lithium ion inside of here. All of them are heated batteries also. Not that you really have to worry about it because back here is also heated but you don't get any thermal conductivity through the floor. And if for some reason you did and the batteries cooled down, they would kick in and heat themselves up. So you will never be without power or without the ability to charge them. So people may be wondering what that is. That is actually a transfer pump to go from one tank to the other. So we have two water tanks in here. We have a 30 gallon above wheel well on this side. We have a 24 above the wheel well on this side. And then this transfer pump. You don't need to use it. It will self-regulate once you fill it. The problem is it takes forever and I don't like waiting. So when we're filling up the tank, I fill up the one tank. And then as it's still filling up, I flip switch and it transfers from this tank to this tank. And it cuts the time that you have to fill up in about half. There's also the valve that's over here. This is actually mounted with a screw going through the handle so it can't actually get bumped. And that is your low point drain. So you just hook a tube to the end of this, and take that screw out, throw the handle, and you can drain your entire water system out of the back. It works great. We actually had to do it when we were in Alaska because we shipped the van back and it was winter time. So it's not in a heated container. So we worried about the plumbing freezing. So I drained everything, put a little bit of antifreeze in there and called it a day. No issues. On this side, you have your heater, your heat exchanger from the Aqua Hot. This is your third one in the van. There's three separate zones. So this is the bay heater. You have your shore power uh, breaker right here. And then there's two switches over here. This top one right there, you flip that and that turns on our awesome filtration system. So this is actually used, it normally comes inside of a Pelican case and they send it to third world countries or places where they need to purify water. We have the same system inside of here. It hits a one micron, a 0.5 micron activated charcoal that also removes toxins. And then it goes over here, which this is a UV light system. So it goes through the UV light system, killing all viruses and bacteria. And this is before it goes to the tanks. So there's two ways to send water through this. You can hook a regular hose up here that's pressurized. Then you throw this valve and it'll start to fill. Or the cool part is we knew that this was built to go to places that you couldn't get water out of a garden hose from somebody's house, or you had to get purified water out of bottles. Most of the time we fill up out of streams because, well, we can and it's free. And to do that, you actually flip this bottom switch and you can hear a pump start up. That pump is actually located inside of this housing right here and the fill spots back here. So all you do is hook up your hose to that, throw it into whatever water jug, stream, wherever you want to pull water from, and it will suck the water up and put it through the system. Now we're going to go inside. The cool part about this build is that we did not use any wood. There is zero wood in the entire build besides two pieces. One is a butcher block flip up counter that we have and the other one is a sink cover. And when we look at the sink cover, that will tell you why we do not put wood inside of a van. Everything is built with uh, high density polyethylene, which is also King Starboard. They use it on the back cabinets in yachts and it's aluminum framed. And then we use Kusa board and carbon fiber. So zero wood in this entire thing. You can put a garden hose in it, 
hose everything down, no worries. There's not gonna be any damage. So let's look inside. One thing you notice as soon as you open the door, a amp research power step drops down. It works with this door or the passenger door in the front and it will automatically close. You go up when you close the door. Pretty cool. Handy, gets out of the way for when you're off-road. There are step lights on it. You can't see them right now, but they are located in here somewhere. They're pretty cool. It's a little bit of a gloomy day, so we're actually gonna start with the ceiling so that way I can get those lights on and you guys can see a little better. The ceiling looks like shiplap, kind of is shiplap, but it's custom made plastic panels that we put up there and then we notch them so that way they look like shiplap. So again, no wood. And then these are the really cool part. So there's a switch back there where you can control them or you can just use your phone on the network that's built into the van, hit a little button and you got ceiling lights. So these are actually nano leaf panels. Uh, I think it's called the nano leaf shape is what the, the panels are. Uh, they are completely controlled. Any color you want to put on them, you can make them dance around. They are touch sensitive. So you can have some fun with that. Or you could program it that when you touch it, it only turns on the lights that you touch or shuts off the lights that you touch. So you can do kind of spotlighting with it. It is a little bit of a finicky thing because they were meant to go on a wall, not on a ceiling, and especially a ceiling that gets an earthquake at least you know seven hours a day sometimes so but they do hold in pretty good uh every once in a while you gotta give it a little pop but we like them starting over here we got solid surface countertops throughout this entire van a two burner induction cooktop that is i, I believe it's 1800 watts don't quote me on that you can look it up it's made by furion um but i think it's 1800 watts it works freaking awesome boils water super quick and it really doesn't draw that much power but it doesn't matter because you got the 1100 amp hours of lithium ion so have a heyday we cooked the full thanksgiving well i i can't say we amber cooked the full thanksgiving dinner in here including baking a turkey and everything and it barely touched the electrical system uh over here this is one of the two pieces of wood that we have inside of here this is our butcher block and has a latch on that side to hold it down flip that up and now you have all of this for countertop space the front passenger seat does swivel so you can swivel it around and also use this as a desk area if you want to right here you have usb outlets with one push then grab a hold pull it up and you got two 110 outlets and all the usbs coming over to the sink this is why I did not put wood in our build. You can see the sink where it grabs most of the moisture from it. It warps. It's actually not bad today, but we'll make it a little pull more out. dramatic. How's that? There we go. The sink cover still works, and I believe we still have a solid surface cover that we had made when we did the countertops uh to go on this so again the van is for sale if you buy it we will try to find that for you just saying <laughs> we have a full-size kitchen sink it is super deep which is nice because anybody that's lived in a van before knows that this is your secondary storage for all your dishes and stuff you don't want to clean occasional clothing articles everything that you just scoop off the counter when it's time to move so the one thing that I would change is this faucet. I love this faucet. It works great. Don't get me wrong, but it is a bar faucet and this can actually hold a full size kitchen faucet. So I'd put that in just to move it a little closer to the center, uh, but it does work awesome. Back here, you have a soap dispenser that goes down below where you can just buy the whole refill kit and just don't refill anything you just put the bottle underneath there put the hose in give it a little squeeze and you're good to go this button is our fancy button you hit this 
and that was just bad timing but <laughs> you hit that button it doesn't turn on the water pump that's always on but it actually activates the secondary water filtration system so the same one that we have in the back we have the same thing underneath the sink so not only do you filter it going into and treat it with uv into the tanks but after it comes out of the tanks before it even comes out of the faucet or the sink or the shower in the back that external uh, it goes through a completely separate filtration system and UV system. So it's nice. The drinking water inside of this van when it comes out of this faucet is better than any bottle of water that you can get anywhere. I guarantee it. Okay, like I said, no wood in this entire build. So this is all King Starboard. There is manual latches on everything. So you have your storage cabinet up here. We keep like plates and drink stuff and cups and everything. Uh, it's all 80-20 aluminum framed, the King Starboard skin on it, and then this bottom part is the Kusa composite board that is all wrapped in ozite, so when you're going down the road and things may chatter a little bit, you don't hear them. It's all sound deadening. Two springs right here, you just push those up and it'll release it. Down below for cabinetry, you have a regular cabinet door style for underneath the sink where we keep the garbage can and all the cleaning stuff. It also gives you access to your plumbing and to where your filtration system is. There's also shut off valves underneath there, not only for here, but you can shut them off each individual tank. You can shut off before it goes into the pump. You can shut off the pump. You can shut off after the pump. I went overkill on an industrial shut off valves in here. So if you ever have a leak or an issue, you can isolate each individual system, each individual pipe without having to lose water to everything. Right here is a pull-out pantry. This was Amber's must-have inside of the van. We had one in the RV and she loved it. So we built one into here. Again, all King Starboard. The cool part about King Starboard too is it is colored throughout the entire piece. So if you get a scratch, it doesn't matter. It's still the same color and you can actually hit it with a heat gun and make it go away. Here you have our drawers, silverware, utensil drawer, pots Whoops. stuff like that so we'll just show you for instance how deep this is so that's actually how deep the drawers are and then the bottom one is deeper that is your deepest drawer we have a, a entire instapot down in here i mean that's how deep that is plus a little extra so the uppers all have latches on them to keep them shut while you're moving. The bottoms actually have large magnets. They're not the magnets that you can get out of like Home Depot or off Amazon. They're actually industrial closure magnets. So they're super strong. Uh, the only time that we've ever had any drawer open is when a dish towel kind of gets stuck like right in here and it's not latched all the way. So. Other than that, we have never had anything ever open inside of this. And this thing has seen itself on two wheels many times, sideways. Amber's going, oh my God, I think it's going to flip, but it's not. It's good. We're good. <laughs> so it, it does hold up. On the opposite side here, you have another upper cabinet right here. This is where we store all of our dry goods stuff. It also has access right here is your receiver for your awning. So if you ever need to work on that or change it, it's simple to get to. Uh, convection microwave. We use this thing all the time. We're big into popcorn and uh, you can also bake in it. It's also an electric oven, has electric coil across the top. Again, 1100 amp hours of lithium, never have a problem. Over here, you have your entire electronics wall. We'll just give a brief rundown on all of this. So you have your Victron color control. This will give you everything that's going on with your inverter. It's also wired over into the battery shunt, which is back here. So you'll be able to see like right now we are pulling 11.2 amps and we got 56% of our battery remaining. We have not ran the van and tried to charge the battery in two days, three days, three days now, I think. So that gives you a little bit of indication of how long it will last. Uh, right here, you have your Aqua High heating system. This thing is awesome. If you do not have one, you should get one. I don't care. I, I would never have anything different than this installed into any of our vans, 
overland vehicles, any of that. So quick breakdown of this. You have our front zone, our mid zone, which is back by the bed, and then the bay, which was the heater that you seen earlier back there. You also have your switch to turn your burner on, off. It works on diesel and electric. So if you really wanted to, you can double down on it and turn the electric on too. They say to use that when you're connected to shore power, but the battery bank in here is big enough that it can handle it. So for some reason, if you wanted to do it, you can. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend it because you don't need it. The diesel's perfectly fine. And then you can also go into here and it gives you all of your diagnostic stuff, your high altitude mode, which we don't need that anymore, seeming that we're in the lowlands of Texas, but we don't need heat anymore. Uh, interior heat priority, so that way you can do summer and winter mode. So summer mode, you really don't need interior heat, so it prioritizes water demand. When you flip on the water, it's also a tankless hot water system, so it will automatically start heating up the water and not waste its efficiency trying to put it through all the radiators in the system. Winter mode, you put it on interior heat, and the interior heat mode will prioritize your heating and you won't get that instant hot water. Over here is our ZAMP solar controller. You can see what the solar is putting out and you can program it to whatever batteries that you have. Light switch. This is our mount for our Gerard awning system. This right here is a bar. You heard me right, it's a bar. It dispenses the liquid painkiller and happy juice out of here with a push of a button. You just turn it on and then you select whatever you want. I have it set up right now that when you push the button and let go, it will automatically pour a double or you can push and hold it and it'll give you a continuous stream. You can program it however you want it. The bottles are actually stored down in here, which we will show you later. You have a 110 outlet. We use that for charging our camera equipment. You have all the USBs. And then back here is the plug that's just dedicated to the microwave. It's individually breakered into the back. Down below the microwave and the countertop here, we have probably one of the biggest refrigerators and freezers you will ever see in a van. It's the Isotherm Cruise 200, which is awesome it works on 12 volt or 110 sorry for the dirty refrigerator but it is what it is <laughs> and then on this side you have a full freezer and we use it <laughs> but a commodity in a van would be ice cream and ice and you can do full containers of ice cream no reason to get the, the mini ones and you just do ice uh, we have ice cube trays that actually have a cover, so that way when you fill them up and stick them in there and you drive down the road, they don't spill all over the place. Moving this way. Up here, we have our really dusty Max Air Deluxe, so it vents out, it pushes air in, it has a bunch of different fan speeds, and you can set the temperature off the remote, so that way if it gets too hot in here and automatically senses it, it will open up and vent, which is nice if you have animals and you're not running the AC. It's a good safety precaution to have. We also have the Max Air Shade, which this thing's pretty cool. So you just pull this and it covers everything. And it also has a little handy light. Over here, you have our cabinets. So we got all of like our cereal stuff, teas. Amber likes her teas. She collects her teas. So this is mainly her teas. And then up here is where we keep our towels, sheets, all that kind of stuff. It goes pretty far back. Yeah, I mean, these are deep. They're really deep. Down to the bottom here, you have the same style of everything, but you also get access to your shower plumbing and your shutoffs, which is nice. So if you have a problem with that, you just reach in here and close them. You don't have to do any contortionist stuff. It does take up a little bit of your storage area, but it's fine. We never had a problem. Down here is all your automated bar stuff. And also the vent where it comes out for the pooper. So there's all the bottles down here. You just put the tops on it. And then there's a pump mechanism right here that comes up to dispense your happy juice. We do have a full shower in here. It's actually pretty good size. My shoulders kind of hit the top part of the wall a little bit, but I can still fit. And I got pretty broad shoulders. Um, the floor in here is actually like a teak tile. But underneath that is a, a regular plastic molded pan. Uh, so if you didn't want the teak in there, you can pull it out. It's just nice because 
It looks a little better than the white and it elevates your feet up off where there might be any little bit of a standing water situation. So you don't have to worry about that. The shower door is a self-cleaning door that just pulls out, latches, comes back in. That is not giving us one problem whatsoever in the months that we have been in here. I thought for sure that the thin plastic is not going to be a good thing, but uh, it, it, it holds up. It's really strong. Uh, the composting toilet in here is a airhead composting toilet. You have a urine container in the front, solids go into the back. Turn the little wheel and you're good to go. Uh, with two people living inside of here, we empty the poo box. I'm gonna say like once a month, we'll, we'll empty that. Uh, the urine depends on where we are. If we're somewhere where I can't go outside, then maybe we get it like every other day. You have to empty it out. Uh, have hooks that pull down over here so you can hang your wet towels or if you're out snowboarding or surfing or whatever, you can throw your stuff right in there so that way it dries and drips right down into the shower. The shower head is located over here. So the shower head is, you can pull it off, use it as a wand. It has multiple functions on here. So I think it does like four different functions uh, for jets. And then it, there's the valve down here. And it also has a separate shutoff right here. So you can turn it on or shut off your water flow without having to mess with the temperature. So if you got a nice hot shower going, you just flip that, shut it off. You can soap up, do whatever you want, flip it back on and you're good to go. So while we're on the shower, the drain system in here is a little unique. And it's unique because it's all reinforced, flexible, marine grade sewer line that is all heated. So there's, there's electronic heating pads throughout the whole thing. It goes back to a 28 gallon gray tank that is located all the way in the back of the van that has a cool little feature of an electronic dump valve. And we'll show you where the switch is for that when we get up towards the front. And it likes to do party tricks. I'll explain that later also. So the drain comes down and the way I designed the system is I wanted it that it, you didn't have to be level for it to drain or get to the back where the, the tank is. So it's actually a water sensing macerator pump that is specifically made for the marine industry and their gray water systems. So as soon as you turn the sink on in the water or the shower and the water gets down and it hits a little sensor that's down there, which tells it that there's water inside of it, which kicks on the pump and it will suck it out and pump it all the way back. So we have literally been on a pretty good angle forward and you can still take a shower because of the way that the pan is pitched and it will drain and kick it all the way to the back. So back here is kind of bittersweet. You do have a dinette that sits right here. This is a lagoon table, so it swivels around all over the place if you want to get in or whatever you're doing. Um, it, it is functional how it sits right now. We do not use it. The bed actually slides all the way forward because you're just shy of a king size bed in here and comes over the top of this. Uh, the mattress that we have is super thick uh, because I have back issues, so I have a custom setup. So it makes it hard to tip the bed to get to the dinette. So we really don't do it. We usually just swivel the seat around in the front. Amber works on her computer up there and has a desk and I don't mind laying in bed and doing all my stuff because, well, it's simple, it's easy. But if you wanted to utilize this and you had a normal mattress, it will work. Uh, you just kind of pick up on the back of the bed and then slide the whole thing backwards. And then this will pop up from underneath. We use it for storage. Uh, so, and then underneath where this sits, you have all of our electrical breakers. So I'm gonna pop this table off so that way we got a little more room so you can see it. And we'll show you all electrical stuff. Super easy to come off. All right, so now we're gonna go over all the electrical panels that are in here. Underneath here, you have USB outlets for days, a 110. Also, you have a 110 on the other side as well that we'll show you in a minute. And then you have all your circuit breakers for your 12 volt system. It's all marine grade, marine grade, sorry. Uh, I think the, the manufacturer is Blue Sea, um, but they're all resettable. No fuse type stuff. Everything in here is 100% resettable. This is all of your main operational equipment. So you got like your water maker, which is all your water filters, the UV systems. 
the lights for outside, your max air fan, heater, transfer pumps, your water pump, refrigerator, and then the macerator pump. These are all the mission critical stuff. Over here are all like your radiator, your DC outlets, your fans, uh, the holding tank pump and holding tank. It's just because I didn't have a label for these, but these are actually your heaters for all of your lines underneath. Uh, all the electronic stuff, the cabin lights, all that would be over here. Right here is your mid cabin heater for the aqua hot system. And then right above that, you have a house radio, which is a fusion system by Garmin. Again, it's all marine, so you can get it wet. It doesn't matter. Uh, it has Bluetooth on it, uh, satellite radio, and it goes to four fusion speakers in here, which are also LED controlled like the ceiling. On the other side, you have your main battery shut off. You throw this, it disconnects everything coming from the battery bank. And then you also have your water tank level sensor is right here. It, it works okay. It, it's one of those things that if you're at an angle, you're never going to get the right reading on it, but it gives you a rough idea. And then behind here, you also have another 110 and all the USB outlets. We keep a fire extinguisher right here that is easy to grab. Hopefully you never need it, but it is there. And then underneath each of these seats, there is storage underneath here and underneath here. And there's also another automatic fire suppression system that is located underneath this seat and another one located underneath this seat. So if you do get a fire, it's going to pick it up quicker than you will realize that you have a fire and automatically extinguish it. Underneath the floor in which we are standing on are all of the batteries. Um, it is a little difficult to get into. A little difficult. You just pop this lip trim piece off and then this floor is actually split on this seam so this will slide forward pop out this will come over and pop out and you can get access to all the batteries underneath it the other cool thing back here is right underneath this you actually pull this up and it is a nice little hidden laundry spot that actually has clothes in it Now you got a bed. We love our bed. It is super comfy, but that's also because the mattress is for my back, so kind of biased there. But it's big. Uh, we're just shy of a king in length. It's like 76 inches long, and I think we are 67 wide. Uh, so it's between a queen and a king. Uh, it works out great. We love it. More than enough room for both of us and Skippy. Up above here, we have his and hers close. Nothing crazy. We have LED lights that are underneath here that are also 12 volt and dimmable. There is a temperature sensor back here for that mid heat. So it gives you the exact temperature above the bed that we are never cold. Up here is our nomadic cooling AC system. It is a little bit on the loud side if you turn the fan up on high. It's not bad with it on low. The reason that we put it above the bed is it's so much more efficient if you just want to cool the main area in which you're in, which most of the time, if you're going to bed at night, that's where you're going to want to cool. Behind that is a projector that does 8K, and it is freaking awesome. Sound quality is awesome. Picture quality is awesome. That goes up to a 65 inch pull down TV. It does work with the air conditioning to be able to keep it in the back, keep the cool back here. You don't always have to have this up. It actually comes off. So if you don't want it up there, you can pull it down. We never take it down. And uh, surprisingly enough, it does not rattle when we're going down the road. It is completely silent, and I'm not a big fan of rattles. If there's a rattle in this thing, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm pulling over, and I'm out fixing it. So it, uh, it works out really good. And I almost forgot, but we have his and hers 
reading lights on both sides. So you can just take, tuck them out of the way, bed them down when you need them. There's also USB outlets located underneath here, along with one tent on either side. Amber, in her all her genius, put little storage boxes up here. And then right above that is our Wi-Fi system that does work off cellular. All you gotta do is just slap the SIM card in the back. You can switch between uh, AT&T, Verizon, uh, T-Mobile, any, any carrier that you have, or it does work in foreign locations too. So if you're in Mexico or a place like that, you can just get a local SIM card and pop that in. And this goes up to the two antennas that we've seen earlier on the roof. Last but not least, the driver and passenger area. So as you can see, these are not Mercedes chairs. They are custom made leather chairs that we had done. Uh, both of them have massage and they are power reclining. It is a manual pull forward and backwards. Uh, and then this chair does swivel. The driver's side uh, does not have massage, but has heat. This one has massage but there's no heat. And the reason being is the switch went in, but they never put the heating elements in the seat. And to be able to get the heating element for it, it is proved to be so difficult. It is not worth it. <laughs> so we never went back and had the heating element put in, but that's okay. Uh, we've not found ourselves having to use it yet. So that's plus side. We custom built an entire console in here. And it also houses our Aqua Hot heating system is inside of here that sits back here. This entire area all the way up to here is all storage with a door that opens back here. And then down in the floor, we have a hidden compartment down there in which we use that for Skippy's food. The center console also dubs as a bed for Skip when we are going down the road. His bed sits on top of it. In the front also down here is you have a 110 outlet and you got USBs for days. Up top of this area, we have a overhead shelf, which we keep all of our camera equipment and everything up there. It's huge. As you can see, it is pretty freaking deep and it's about eight inches tall. Uh, holds tons of stuff up there. Up above here too, you got your sun visors and also there's little storage areas up here, which those are kind of cool. Uh, moving on to the center part here is your switches for all of your lights. The cool part is they are all trigger six shooter systems. So they are wireless. Uh, you can take these with you and you can also control it with a Bluetooth app, Bluetooth app on the, your phone. We have a pedal control box that will help with your throttle response. The CB radio. This is our Garmin overlanding GPS. We love this thing. Uh, you should get one. They're pretty cool. Uh, it has topographical maps in it and everything. And you can upload map files for all trail systems. And then this is the fancy monitor that actually shows all of your thermal imaging night vision by FLIR. So this is that camera that we pointed out earlier in the front. It comes right back here to the screen so you can see everything while you're driving down the road. On the driver's side of the console, you have a 100 amp circuit breaker which controls all your accessories up here in the front. It also has a button right here that you push that, lights up green. That's the magic button. There is a secondary alternator installed on this that puts out 280 amps directly to your battery bank. So you never plug this in, ever. It will charge itself along with the 380 watts of solar. There is a air horn right here. That is a train air horn. So if you really wanna scare somebody, you hit that. This right here works for your onboard air. So it does have an onboard air compressor and a tank in the back. And then this right here turns on your lights for all the outside. So that way your switches work. I put that in because the trigger system works on an RF frequency. So sometimes if you get into an area that has a lot of frequencies in it, it will start making your lights flash. This, you don't have to worry about it. Right here is your fuel gauge for the second fuel tank. And then right here is your switch to be able to transfer from your second tank to your main tank if you need it. On the passenger side of the console, if you look down here, this is the magic switch I was talking about where you can open and close your gray tank valve. I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to. Anyway, it works really good when you have that idiot driver that just rides your tail. That will not back off no matter what you do. So you just reach down there and you hit the button and magically his windshield starts getting wet and he backs off. 
not saying do that, but I'm telling you it works if you get my drift. We got that idea from a couple friends of ours that have a earth roamer, great people. And uh, they were like, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? And I was like, that is ingenious. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> On the back doors and the side door, we actually have these custom made screens that roll up and drop down. Uh, you just undo the latches, they fold down, and uh, there are no see screens on it. So it keeps the mosquitoes and all the bugs out. If you're interested in more photos and stuff, check out our Instagram. It's at Adaptive Humanity. You'll see a whole bunch of reels. You'll see stuff that this van can do when we were in Alaska and traveling all of the west coast of the U.S. So that's it for the van. I am sure I missed a whole bunch of stuff, kind of like the speakers that are inside of here and all the little hidden outlets that are everywhere. You're never short of outlets. Um, and then there's some engine modifications that were done too, along with a custom tune inside of the ECU to give you a little bit more horsepower and torque. Uh, if you're interested about that, just message me and I'll give you the info on all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then remember, it's for sale. It is for sale. You are not going to find a better build than this in the quality of materials used and no wood. No wood is a big thing. So if you're interested, let us know. It could be your next rig. Is that a wrap, Skip? <laughs>